So how do you start investing in stocks, ETFs, bonds, things like that? Well, step one, you want to open a stock brokerage account. Generally, I like Fidelity, Charles Schwab, Vanguard. Charles Schwab has something called Thinkorswim. You can actually use that to practice trading with fake money, so it's not really your money. Uh, so that's called paper trading. So that's kind of nice. So if you want to get used to how the system operates, uh, you have that. And I think Fidelity has something similar to that in Vanguard probably as well. So when you do open a brokerage account, you want to ask, okay, do I want a taxable account or a tax advantaged account? So if you're currently working and you have an income, you can use uh, tax advantage accounts for like a Roth or a traditional, either an individual retirement agreement or people will call it individual retirement account. If you have an employer, uh, they could provide you with a 401k or a 403b account. And, and those are great too, because hopefully they give you some form of company match. With the IRA, you're on your own, but those are a couple options. If you don't necessarily have an income or your income's way too high, you could also have a non-deductible uh, tax advantage account, but basically that's for very high earners where you're making a lot of money, uh, like over a quarter of a million dollars a year. Uh, and then you could do a backdoor Roth conversion or, or whatever, something similar to that. For a taxable account, you don't need to have an income. You just, if you have money sitting around and you want to invest it, uh, that's great. There are ways that you could use long-term capital gains and qualified dividends to help reduce your tax burden. If you make less than a certain amount of money, uh, you can actually, if you hold the stocks or whatever it is for more than 12 months, you can actually have zero taxes on a long-term capital gain if you make below a certain amount of money. I believe that's around 90 or so thousand dollars and uh, similar for qualified dividends. Now, if you have something you sell less than 12 months, basically short-term capital gains, that's taxed at normal income, and non-qualified dividend distributions, effectively those are taxed at uh, normal, ordinary income as well. So if you make sure that you're selling things at the right time, uh, you can really reduce your taxes. The second thing you're going to want to do, so after you open your account and you figure out whether you want the taxable or a tax advantage, say a Roth, traditional um, IRA, or if you're doing it through an employer such as a 401k or a 403b, the next thing you have to do is fund the account. So that means put money in it. So how do you do that? It's usually a wire transfer or a ACH transfer from your existing bank account uh, into one of the stock brokerage accounts. But then what you're gonna do, once the money's there and the funds have settled, basically it takes a couple of days, just like you clear a check when you go to cash a check or whatever, maybe three to five business days later, you go back and then you're gonna pick out all the stocks, exchange traded funds, mutual funds, bonds, things like that, that you wanna buy. So once you buy those things, you've actually invested. If you stop at step two and you just put money in the account, you haven't really done anything, you just have an account that sits there and doesn't really accrue that much in, in terms of uh, interest. Personally, for me, I like the S&P 500. This consists of the top 500 U.S. companies. It's an, you can either get them as ETFs or mutual funds, and it's returned 10.7% per uh, year over the last 30 years. And if you wanted to invest in those 500 companies, things that follow that would be the ETF SPY, VOO. Uh, this is a mutual fund, FXAIX, SWPPX is through Charles Schwab only. If you have a dollar amount, you can put one dollar in this account. Uh, if you want to buy a share of SPY, that's like $520 currently to buy one share. So if you don't have a lot of money, you can put money here. If you have um, a little bit more money, you can put FXAIX. What you'll find is these are all low cost uh, funds. Effectively, what you don't want to do is have a 1% or 2% fee on anything that you're doing because those fees compound over the life of your investing. So if you, say, invest in something that has a 1% or 2%, say 2% annualized fee, and that happens for the next 40 years, you may lose over half of the earnings that you would have had otherwise whereas SPY is like 0.09% fee, 
instead of a one or two percent fee. Other people, as you get closer to retirement or if somebody is not um, okay with risk, you're going to have less risk in general with a more diversified uh, portfolio. So they might have a target date fund and that will mix in uh, some amount of bonds, some amount of cash, and it will have some stocks and other things there as well. So if I invested $100 a month over the last 30 years, it's returned 10.7% averaged uh, annualized rate of return. So I would have currently today $236,000 uh, in that account. Recognize that all investments carry some amount of risk and can lose value. Also, that past performance does not guarantee future performance. So if something went up 50% last year, it could easily go down 40%, 70% this year. The joke is stock price moves, basically it's Mr. Market. And Mr. Market is not rational or how the market feels. That's how the prices are going up and down. So sometimes things might be going down a lot, but the companies are still performing well. So you can buy it at a discount. And just so you know, there's a difference between trading and investing. Investing is I buy something, I hold on to this good company or maybe 500 companies. And effectively, I hold on to them for a long period of time, many years, and I get paid dividends and things uh, for holding those companies as a shareholder. And when I talk about trading, trading means I'm buying something, I'm selling something, I'm buying something, you know, in short periods of time. 90% of actively traded accounts do not beat the S&P 500. So if 90% of professionals that do this day in and day out and study it constantly cannot even outperform the S&P 500, I'm probably not going to do too well either. So I might as well just go with the S&P 500. And because I'm buying it every single month, I'm dollar cost averaging. So when the price goes down, I bought it at the cheap uh, amount. And when it goes up, okay, I bought some at the higher amount, but I don't have to think about it. What you don't want to do is have analysis paralysis where you're worried constantly and looking at stocks. You want to go live your life, work, do whatever you want to do outside of that, but you still want to have some money for retirement. And that, in my opinion, as well as Warren Buffett, if you don't have that time to dedicate every single day, the S&P 500 does pretty well, or at least it has over the last several decades. That's what I invest a lot into. So I hope this gives you some clarity. Please subscribe. I talk about a lot of financial education topics. I talk about investing, how to save money on taxes, as well as how to just make more money in general. So thank you for watching and have a great day.